Welcome to Tools on Tech. Logseek 0.10.0 just dropped and I thought I'd try something new where I just go through the change log, demo what's new and my thoughts on it, giving you a quick up to date on the status of Logseek. Let's dive straight into it with the new search function. So hitting the control K means that you immediately get like a new type of overview. It shows you the commands. It shows you any recent pages, allowing you to quickly go up and down and select a file. I did immediately find a bug in the form of the tip that uses a Mac keyboard shortcut. I do not have a command key on my Linux laptop which is fine, I filed a bug report and I'm sure it'll get that fixed. Now, when you search for anything, um, let me see, I probably have a demo page. So in this case, demo, you get the pages first and it limits itself to like the first five pages, meaning that it can show you the other things. So in this case, commands, blocks, and then you can scroll down to get like more things like recents. You can click on this one to really show everything. And I like this setup because usually you're trying to filter down to the result and this will give you everything in like one overview. It also really shows that Logseek thinks pages are first class citizens inside of your PKM. And I've been messing around with their future database version and property setup and I can confirm that Pages are seen as the building blocks of a lot of the larger structures, meaning that they get classes and stuff like that. Now it will work for blocks, but blocks are more things I, that you query and pages are things that you search for because they are a collection of top level knowledge. The rest works pretty simple. You can scroll through it, open pages by either clicking on them, using the enter to open them or shift and clicking and shift enter to put them straight towards the sidebar. So for example, I search for the demo page. If I enter it, it opens it straight in the main view. If I do the same thing, I do demo, I do shift enter, it will open it on the side. This is part of what you're already used to and that will get you the most mileage. Now, I love the fact that you can search down and drill. You can also filter down. So if you do slash straight away, you can say like, hey, I just wanna search for pages. I just wanna search on the current page. I only wanna search for blocks by limiting that down in such a quick way you can really narrow down on what you're looking for you can even say that you only want to search for files which might be useful if you have a specific directory structure or if you have like lots of attached pdfs so you know you're looking for a pdf and not a page now another great feature of the new search function is that i can immediately copy and it shows me that like in the tool tip. so for example got this demo project thing it says copy reference so i do windows c in my case and then I get a reference straight towards the block. Useful if you wanna search for you for a couple of things without doing it in line, which is a bit more clunky than the new search setup. Overall, I think the new search function and the control K for everything is a step in the right direction. It still fills my salt and pepper test, which means that I have a page with salt and pepper in there somewhere, like a steak recipe, and I try to search for the keywords and it won't find the page because it still very much filters on the block title level but they are working on that and doing that is probably a follow-up step maybe when the ai search will hit depending on the engine that you will be using second thing in the feature list was the adding of colors now i'm less enthusiastic about this i like the fact that we have extend color so you can pick a color and then change the way logseek looks my only gripe with this is, is that it is for your lock seek in general and i would prefer the accent color to actually be something for each vault that you have so that if i have for example my dnd notes that my lock seek will color red or when i'm doing a demo it will go into orange so that i know that i'm in my demo or my dnd vault and i'm no longer accidentally making daily journal notes in the wrong vault and then i have to copy them over that's not the case i tested it it's the first thing that i tried so for that one i'm still going to have to use themes and then not themes itself but you know the custom css because that is vault specific it looks clean it shows another step towards getting like a more consistent configuration and user interface it's easy to use. Those things are, of course, what I'm looking at this uh, mostly for. There's a back to default color, which also shows that from a UX standpoint, they are starting to think more about this because it doesn't sound like an obvious one, back to default color, but having a button that says like, you know, bring this back to the basics is something that end users like. People that are not familiar with Logseek don't know what the basic color is. Having a button to click on and just go back to the basics is, I think, really nice those were the 
headline features. Then of course we have a couple of fangs in the setup, mostly language translations, bug fixes, like the wrong bounding coordinates for the PDF highlights, which is nice if you use PDF a lot. I have to admit, I didn't. I've been messing with the PDF a bit, but I'm gonna look into making a, maybe a dedicated video on that one because there's too much to talk about there. Then we have things like fixed issues, small things that were bugging us. The fixed background color for some UI buttons. Unfortunately, I tried figuring out where that mistake was, but I couldn't find it. But I'm assuming that for the UI buttons is more consistent now, which is always great. Then the demo page creation for the browser version. I browsed through the code a bit to see what happened. It seems that there was a bug that didn't make like the subdirectories that were needed to set it up, meaning that if you opened a demo space in the browser, things weren't as consistent or not saved as you would expect. At least when the directory is not there, he doesn't write it there and then you'll probably get error messages. So this is great for people that try the demo version on the website as it will be more consistent and working in a Windows environment. Then we see a fix for the file system path handling. Now, if you're running on a Mac system, you probably didn't have this problem, but on Windows, the universal naming convention, the slash slash thing used for network drives was a bit of a pain. I use them not very often because my network drives are very much based on cloud infrastructure because using my Windows shares with Samba and Linux has been a pain and I'm just glad I don't have to deal with it. But anybody that use any type of long naming structure where the thing doesn't start with something like a drive letter will get this fix in and means that, that you know when you're saving or when you're making a clickable link things will work a lot cleaner and it will help people that want to store stuff on their network drive though i would still recommend against it because as far as i know loxic still tries to save every keystroke and if your network drive is even a tad slow you will start noticing that when you start typing really fast and then the last bug fix seems to be a fix for the query builder construction now anybody that has used the query function it is nice i'm glad it works but if it messes up then for me that's not a big problem i'm used to writing queries so i'll just go to the code fix it and i'll be done so i didn't notice this bug but i'm confident that people that aren't fanatical query writers and that just use the clicking interface to make their own paths the moment it screws up somewhere they will be lost so super happy that they're using a fix there because that means less people get lost people not getting lost and frustrated means they enjoy their experience means that they'll get all the benefits that loxic brings to them and hopefully start using blocks and queries more often which is to me one of the most powerful features of loxic so that's a quick overview of the change log for 0.10.0 .0. it's a new format I'm just experimenting here. I like it. I was always going through the change log when it was happening. And by doing that inside a video, you get to see my thoughts process, uh, how I look at these new features and know what's happening in the Logseek world without immediately having to update. If you like it, leave a like, then I'll know I need to make more of these quick change log videos. If you want to see me do back in history and do it over change log, an old one, then drop a change log number and I might make some time to do exactly the same thing, but then for old features that I might be using every day, but I'll treat them like they're brand new and hand them into this video. And remember, you're awesome. Keep it up and see you in the next one.